Uh, <clears throat> I'm Peter Baroli. I'm the producer of this film, which we're calling... What are we calling the film? Simone. Simone. Tell me it again. I want to take this off. Can I take it off? Yes. Why are you wearing a mask, Raleigh? Well, because of the coronavirus scare. But we've been living here now in quasi-quarantine for weeks. And it makes me slightly... Uh, Claustrophobic, the mask. Well, your mask is very pretty. Mm, well, can I take it off now? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, tell us again now. Um, why I'm not wearing a mask or where I was wearing a mask? Who are you? Oh, I'm Peter Rawley. I'm the producer of the film. Why did you do this film? Uh, passion. Passion for the material. Tell, tell us about the process of actually becoming familiar with the material because you actually optioned it and the book was only in Spanish. Yes. Well, um, I don't remember how that happened. I think that I read a version in Spanish and you helped me with phrases and words that I didn't understand. That's, that's my only memory of that. It's a short book, as you know, so it's not so, not so difficult to read. And what was it about the book that attracted you to, to optioning it? Um, I think it showed uh, life in Puerto Rico, which very few people know anything about Puerto Rico, particularly Americans don't really know what it is. And to me, when I came here for the first time, it was like everything in life. It had its own story, it had its own uh, vivacity, it had its own culture. And I liked the people very much. And I wanted to make a story that was a Puerto Rican story, not, you know, Puerto Rican meets American sailor. And I wanted to make something that made a curious kind of um, passionate expose of the way life was lived in um, Puerto Rico, which I love, by the way. Tell us about your work with the director, Benny Kaplan, and the screenwriting. Um, the book was not an easy book to adapt, is what she said. Well, it took me a couple of drafts that Betty wrote for me to understand quite what she was driving at. Um, because the, the book has many themes and many layers. Many layers of story and... I, once I understood what she was driving at, it became really enjoyable to look at the book as you might look at a mine shaft and say, well, it's there, I just have to chip it away, bring it all out. And uh, I didn't think, um, you know, you've all seen those pictures where they say, on this tiny island, who would have thought 
a herd of elephants would have lived here for a thousand years. I didn't want to do anything like a National Geographic film. I just wanted to do a film that was about the Puerto Rico, which I've now lived in for eight years. So uh, I'm not saying I'm an expert on the island. I'm not. But that was what attracted me. Tell us about what you think of the crew that you had and their work. Yeah, well, that's kind of question which is, uh, has a, mm, comparative ingredient. And that is to say, how much is a Puerto Rican crew like an American crew? And uh, for me, there was no difference. The Puerto Rican crew, which was 90% of the crew, were educated, hardworking, always willing to work something new, and always willing to do the most difficult things if that's what was asked of them. And they were terrific. I had no reservations about anyone. Now, we, we think that you're a rare producer in the sense that you, you don't make your uh, self seen on the set a lot. But somehow, when you do show up, it's when you're needed. How, how do you manage to do that? Well, um, Charles Orme, who was the associate producer of many of the Bond films, was working with me on a picture. And he was called away to do a Bond film. And I was left uh, without a blind producer. And um, I said, well, Charles, give me a list of names of people I can go to. He said, you don't need to go to anyone. Film is a matter of pure common sense. What you have to have is not a deep knowledge of lenses or anything like that. <coughs> Could you repeat that? Not a deep, what you need in film. Hmm? Start again because I sneezed. Oh. He, told you. he said to me, you don't need to know about lenses, you don't need to know about light. You, 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 that's someone else's job. I said, well, what, what do you, how do you plan the day when you film? He said, well, I check in with the production office and then I visit. I visit the set, I visit the wardrobe, I visit the production design. I go every day to see how they're getting on, to encourage, to see if I can improve or get something that they need. And I would have that routine every day, not at the same time every day. And I didn't make a fuss, this is Charles talking about my turning up. He just turned up, said hi to everybody, don't stop what you're doing. And so I did that on the first film I made and it was invaluable advice because you don't, a producer needs an overview, not an inner view. An overview meaning the whole picture not how each part works. Now, it's a lot of fun to find out how things work. It's like finding out how a motor car works. The first time you can't quite believe this is the way it works. But once you've been through the experience of make, making a film and been effectively the line producer, then 
almost instinctively, the next film and the next film, you've got a kind of um, dictionary of things that I have to do. And they never change because the problems making a film never change. There are always problems that you can predict are going to be problems. Your film, Simon, is only the second film to restart and start shooting in all of the United States. How did you achieve that miracle? Well, it was a miracle. I don't know how much I had to do with it. Um, the problem we had to deal with was that the circumstances of the island are rather different from the mainland USA. So, for example, we know that Puerto Rico the bug came in on a boat or it came in on a plane. Uh, there's no other way of getting here. So um, we looked at the figures every day in the newspapers. We talked to our friends in the government. We bullied our lawyer to get him to ask the question again. And gradually, we worked out that we really needed nine days of photography. And that didn't seem to be too hard to do. So about two, three weeks before we actually restarted, we put a lot of pressure on um, the government officers, film commission, lawyers, people we knew who were attached to the government. Uh, and we just said, you know, it's a Puerto Rican film. It's an entirely Puerto Rican film. The only person really who's not Puerto Rican is Kung Jure, the Chinese girl. And I just felt it was an important film to do, to start a big Puerto Rican film and not finish it would be terrible shame, terrible pity to not to do that. So they were nice, they were slow, uh, slow to make decisions, but they made them and they allowed you to talk to you uh, about it, they allowed you to argue they didn't write sort of um, a one-page sentence saying, we're not going to let you make this movie. They were always open or left a door open for further discussions. So eventually there were oh, more than half a dozen people who were our spokesmen, and it got done. I don't think, apart from um, my relentless English stubbornness uh, had more to do it than that. I just kept it going. I just kept talking about it. And um, that was the biggest contribution I had to make. Yeah. But you were instrumental in getting the American unions to agree, which was a big hurdle that you guys had to jump, wasn't it? Well, it's a bit more complicated than that. We are... I'm not going to deal with the complication, but one of the things you have to have uh, in an independent film is a completion guarantor, a company that says we will finish and deliver this picture whatever happens. It's, it's a kind of very big insurance policy, and you have to work very closely with them. They were obviously keen to get it finished, otherwise they would have lost money and had no way of recovering it. 
And so we started, each of us, developing relationships with the various unions. And each of the unions had the same problem. They didn't want to risk the lives of their members at all. Nevertheless, they didn't want their members to be out of work. So it was difficult for them. And they took extraordinary precautions, which they were right to do. And um, I thought it was going to be a big logistical problem, having bottles of water and sprays and all sorts of stuff. And um, the crew just dealt with it. We just got on with it, you know. You go into an area which is called Zone B, which is kind of the base, and you're sprayed with water and with a disinfectant, and your temperature is taken, and if you're okay, you can go on. If, you, if you're not okay, you can't go on. So everybody got used to that, and it wasn't just at the start of the day. If you went from let's say zone B, which was the base camp, to zone C, which was where the um, transport and the caravans and all, all of that was stored. If you went there, you had to first of all be washed when you went in there, but then when you came out and wanted to go back to zone B, you had to get washed again. Nobody minded that. Nobody complained. Nobody came to us and said, this is too much, they're doing it too often. They just got on with it. And that, by the way, is a characteristic that I observe about Puerto Rico, that the majority of people who are working just get on with it. They're not there to make a fuss. They're there to make their money and improve their technique, etc., etc., etc. Delightful to work with, very quiet set, very... I didn't have one single complaint. Maybe some of my colleagues did, but I didn't have a complaint of any kind. A few jokes, but uh, no complaints. What are your hopes for this film once it's finished? Well, I have two hopes. Um, I don't know which is more important. I'd certainly like to like, get my money back because I have a huge investment in the picture. Um, but secondly, I want people to see that in the United States, because we are in the United States, there are different ways of making films. There are different setups, there are different attitudes, and that uh, the island is much bigger than one expects. It has a very varied terrain, it has mountains, it has waterfalls, it has rivers, it has I mean, it's a very, very intriguing place. I want, if I can get the message out that there's something worth looking at in Puerto Rico, that would be it. Nothing to do with tourism. I don't get, get into the area of tourism. Um, but that's what I think, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, Betty and I have worked on a number of films together and a couple of movies of the week, things like that. We've worked together a lot. I hardly ever see her when we're filming. Her hours are her hours. Her job is her job. I don't have to interrupt her. 
I don't know, have to go onto the set and say, are you sure we got the camera in the right place? Or isn't this actress wearing high heels, blah, 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 blah. I don't have to do any of that. You either absorb the director's vision as you're working on the preparation, on the script, so that you know what she's going to do. You don't have to go there and see it be done, you know. If that something went wrong, if, uh, I can't imagine it, but let's say the cameraman came to me and said, there, oh, there's a shot we worry a lot about because we didn't think it was right, blah, 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 blah. I can never imagine that happening, but that's where I, I would never get that, accept that from someone unless they were as senior as the cameraman. And the senior, the senior person in the crew is the cameraman. So tell us, what, what is producing? Well, Producing is uh, um, crisis control. There's a crisis every 10 minutes on a film, and you have to control it. And you can't make a fuss about it. What was unusual about this film was that when we finally knew we had permission to shoot the, s the second part, I felt a tremendous burden of responsibility for the actors and the crew. That we were going into an area which everybody believed was as safe as you could make it, but nevertheless it was my responsibility so that of those last nine days, I would say th three of the days in terms of time were spent looking at the crew, looking at the actors, making sure that everybody looked as healthy as they had the day before. Because I felt it. I felt if something went wrong, it was my responsibility. And it was. I was the producer. That's basically what a producer does. He's responsible. And I was very lucky. The gods were very kind. We didn't have those problems, but it was, it was a burden. It was a burden to carry. Yeah, that's all I want to say. <laughs>